Hello, I've written up something for you today and I'd like to read it out for you. It addresses the issue of these times where things are getting polarised, socially polarised and politically polarised. The online media is set up to present more of the type of things we've already shown interest in. So it tends to feed us more and more of the same viewpoints as time goes on. So um, we can end up getting a very narrow perspective of what's going on in the world. How to win an election or how you won the election. We only truly win when the best within us wins. It is normal enough to want our side to win. But even if the other side wins, we can still use that situation to benefit ourselves. Any situation where we resist the temptation to resort to low ethics, dubies, tactics and unworthy attitudes and manage to hold ourselves to something nobler and more worthy is to our advantage. Every time we do that, we have overcome the forces which would try and pull us down to a lower level. Encountering this inner gravity, this inner pull downwards, and staying upright in our principles and ethics, we strengthen what is good and right within us. We strengthen our character. When we strengthen our character, we gain, we benefit, we win in deep and important ways. When we choose to respond from the highest and best within ourselves, rather than the rambunctious noisy voices which vie for our attention, we strengthen our connection with our own inner wisdom and our own inner goodness. We empower ourselves because we are using our own inner compass as a guide to our direction in life. With practice we learn to trust the inner promptings of the highest and best within us, because we see that doing so makes us happier and more at peace in the long run. We then become inwardly directed rather than being subject to the vagaries and unpredictability about our events. We learn to rise above reactions and become creative. In these divisive times, politicians and public figures of various types seem to become cartoon caricatures of themselves. Personalities and situations are becoming highly polarised. It can get very tempting to gloss over the unworthy behaviour and attitudes of those on the side we support and overemphasize similar distortions in those who represent the other side. To the extent that we're able to see the other side as deserving of respect, we grow in our capacity to live in peace with others and the world in which we inhabit. Doing so can be very challenging, especially if we see some on the other side resorting to low or dubious tactics in order to win. It can become very tempting to hate and revile such people. Certainly we don't want to offer them any encouragement for such behaviour, but hating and reviling people is usually a step too far as it will cause us to lose connection with the deeper and wiser aspects of ourselves. We can hate and revile their actions if we must, but hating and reviling them as people is another matter. In a way, karma, the law of cause and effect, is always instant. The instant we want someone else to suffer, we start to suffer. We suffer to the extent we want them to suffer. Anger, resentment and hate are all forms of suffering. They are extreme forms of suffering in comparison to true happiness and peace of mind. Try being happy while wanting someone else to suffer. It really can't be done in any genuine way. The lower aspects of ourselves, some call it the ego, will try and fool us into thinking that our suffering is only because of what they did or what they are doing. But this is only partly true. If we look deeper, we see that the cause of much of our suffering is our reactions to what they did or what they are doing. Of course, we may well experience some suffering because of their actions, if they harmed us or someone we care about. However, we will magnify our own suffering to the extent that we want them to suffer for what they did. We may convince ourselves that we want justice, but often what we want is vengeance. We can pursue justice without having to lose our connection with the best within us. But we cannot pursue vengeance or act from hate and resentment and expect of any real happiness or peace of mind. When we're in the hate state, we see them, the other side, as the baddies. We will see plenty of evidence to prove our views because the media we're attracted to will confirm those views. The media will respond to us engaging with those views by serving up more of the same. The media notice that when they serve up certain content to their audience, they get more response and more advertising revenue, so they serve up more of the same. This is just as true for one individual running a social media channel as it is for a major channel run by the mass media. 
When we are reacting and fearing, hating or despising others, our morality can begin to slip. We can become accepting of people on our side who resort to dirty tricks towards the other side because we feel that the other side somehow deserve it. They are the baddies after all in our judgement. Except we forget that the other side see our side as the baddies and the bad behaviour on both sides keeps feeding the flames. When we inwardly bond ourselves to habits of thinking and feeling which includes an intense form of us and them, we are bonding ourselves to misery. We are setting ourselves against a section of humanity and that never bodes well. Yes, if we want, we can become involved in efforts to create a better and more just society. The important thing is to be able to do so without sacrificing our connection with the deeper, wiser parts of ourselves. We cannot really be creating a better society if we are breaking off from the better parts of ourselves in the process. The better parts of ourselves don't operate so well through a framework of us and them. Just about everyone, no matter their gender, race, social standing or whatever, can benefit from the type of liberation which comes from breaking free of the trap of polarised ways of thinking, feeling and relating. The only way to increase the amount of love on the planet is for more people to become more loving and more forgiving. More people getting into blaming, judging and attacking won't do that. More people piling into the fray on social media won't do that either. If instead we learn to respond to external events from the highest and best within ourselves, we begin to realise that the side we're really on is the side of the highest and best within everyone. Usually that will take the form of us wanting the highest good for all concerned. And this is as much about how we do things as what we do. This is the way of liberation. We are moving out of being self-serving and looking towards that which will serve the greater good. Even if the supposedly right side wins, society as a whole loses if there is an ethical slide or corruption is introduced into the process of how we choose our leaders. We will be setting ourselves up for a less healthy society in the long run. Ultimately, we all lose from that. A true sense of ethics is not just about what we want. It is about what we will do in order to get what we want. Who or what are we willing to support in order to get what we want? If we are willing to be fake, lie, cheat or steal, or support others who are willing to do so, we have already lost from the perspective of the highest and best within us. When you forgive, you win. Or another way to put it is that when you align with the higher aspects of yourself and are not swayed so much by those who try to influence you to align with their agenda, you discover another agenda. You discover that part of you has a sense of direction and a sense of purpose which was previously unknown to you or which you were only vaguely aware of. You also discover that a sense of fulfilment and well-being comes from aligning with the promptings of that higher part of you. Listening to that part of you may well bring you a new sense of happiness and well-being which you rarely have ever experienced before. You may find this sense of well-being increasingly replaces the daily struggle which used to characterise your life. Therefore, whatever happens in the outer world, if you relate to those involved on both sides from within the framework offered to you by the highest and best within you, you'll become increasingly happy and fulfilled. This will be a type of happiness and fulfilment which is largely independent of outer events, such as who wins or who loses an election. The practice the likes of forgiveness, compassion or mindfulness in your relationship to all events and to all of those involved in those events, this becomes a means to helping you become liberated and to become more and more of your better self. As you become more inwardly guided and inwardly directed, you liberate yourself from the effects of outer events. This is because your sense of happiness and fulfilment will increasingly come from your alignment with your inner sense of direction and not from the results of outer events. You can still be concerned about outcomes and who wins and you can still be involved in influencing outcomes, but the eventual outcome will have much less effect on your sense of well-being. Inwardly you will be free and at peace. Inwardly you will win because you will always find ways of for outer events to serve your inner growth by helping you to align more closely with the highest and best within you. In this way you will come to see all events if approached in the right attitude as being useful in serving the highest and best within everyone. You come to realise that the best way you can serve others is to use all circumstances and events to liberate yourself from your reactions and then to share yourself with others from within that sense of liberation. 
you can reach escape velocity from the gravity of anger, resentment and the heavy emotions which would pull you down. In this way you're aligned with the greater and higher purpose underlying the process of life and evolution. When this is the case you cannot help one, no matter what happens in your outer life.